buds. Wah, got something in my mouth. That's where the party is. What's up everybody, this is Scott and welcome back to another video. You know me, you know that I love truly wireless earbuds. So today I happen to have these guys right here. This is the Jabra Elite Sport. It feels like 2017 has been about the year of the truly wireless bud. And yet again, this is one that I've had a couple times requested to me to review. I happened to see them, I happened to see them on sale and I thought, okay, let's give them a shot. Do they really stack up to the Apple AirPods? Those that know me know that I absolutely love the Apple AirPods. They have been the best truly wireless buds that I've tested so far in 2016 and 2017. So I'm really interested to know if the Jabra Elite Sport can kind of stack up to the Apple AirPods. If you watch my videos in the past, you know that I test on five things. Bluetooth connectivity, which is probably the most important aspect. The actual audio quality when you're using the headphones, because you know, they are actual headphones. The price, the battery life, and the look, feel, comfort, and kind of the things that come with it. Uh, the Jabber Sport has a ton of different options, and I'm going to talk about those here in a little bit. So there's one thing right out of the way that the Jabber Elite Sport do, and they're waterproof. You can kind of see in these images right here that I put them through the test, and needless to say, they've worked every single time after, even actually submerging them in water. They are waterproof up to one meter. So for us U.S. folks that don't know what that means, I did a little quick Google giggle. I did a quick Google calculation for you. It's about three and a half ish feet. Let's call it three feet just to be safe. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the comfort and the fit and the overall look of these headphones. This ties directly to the audio quality, which we'll get to in a minute. These are completely made of plastic. Even though it's a very high end plastic, they're still made of plastic, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. When you have these things in your ear, in the charging case or in your hand, they are a very high quality put together product. The fact that they're plastic is just merely one of those things. When they're in your ear, you can actually press up and down on both sides of it in order to press the buttons. Now, this is one thing that I didn't happen to like in some of the previous videos that I had with some other wireless buds. When you press, you have to press a little bit harder than you normally would, which means you're grinding that particular earbud into your ear. I'm not necessarily a big fan of that, so I would like to see some haptic buttons on the side. It's much better than the braggy dosh, the headphones as well, because when you really had to mash on the headphone, which by the way, it still is very, very silly brand name, these are much easier to press. They also come with a heart rate monitor and a passive mode. Now the heart rate monitor is one of those ones that take it or leave it, it may not necessarily be the most accurate thing because when I took my heart rate on my phone versus taking my heart rate in these, two completely different numbers and I'm not really sure which one is correct. So this is one of the few truly wireless earbuds that have controls for everything baked on the outsides of the earbuds themselves. I talked a little bit about those buttons. You can press up and down on both sides and when you double press on the right one, it enters that passive mode. This is great for runners or bikers to make sure that they can hear their surroundings yet still listen to the music and the heart rate and the different things that go on inside those earbuds. A couple of downsides with the functionality itself. The left one, you cannot play by itself the right one you definitely can do and that means when I have the right one in my ear the music can continuously play and I can take the left one out however if I take the right one out and the left ones in the music and everything completely stops with that bit of downside let's talk about the phone call quality though the phone call quality is really really good not quite as exceptional as the Apple AirPods but definitely on the higher end of that scale in terms of quality this is one of those headphones that you still want to make the time to make sure that you're getting the correct fit when I first took them out of the box, they were incredibly uncomfortable. It felt like I was jamming ice picks into my ears. However, after a little bit of a customization, I got the right tips on. That includes the tips that hook around my ear, as well as the tips that go inside my ear, and it felt relatively comfortable. I should note, however, they're still really uncomfortable to wear, even after about 90 minutes. So I did put them through the battery test, and I'll talk about that in a second, but they were really uncomfortable wearing them for 90 to 120 minutes at a time. So keep that in mind mind if you have small ears. Evidently, I have fairly strange shaped ears. I don't know. So I'm going to talk about the music quality now. Now the big thing with music quality is it directly ties to that fit that you get. So make sure that you take the time because if you get a good seal, you get really excellent sounds out of these headphones. The bass was definitely there, it didn't thump too much, not quite as heavy as the Apple AirPods, but the mids and the highs were nice and crisp, but again, you're getting truly wireless buds, so you're not really looking for a complete audiophile experience. 
These are definitely much, much better than most, definitely better than the Broggy Dash, and that's helpful because at a cheaper price tag. If you're looking for some decent audio quality as well as the ability to be wireless and waterproof, these can't treat you too badly. Let's talk about the battery life. I was able to get right around three hours and 45 minutes, four hours of the couple times that I had to go all the way through the cycle charge. So the battery life was right on par with the four, four and a half hours that they had mentioned before. I stream everything. That's another thing. You can't store anything locally on these, but that's okay. That works out for me. With that three hours and 45 minutes to four hours, I just popped them back in, left for about an hour, came back, and I was able to go right straight through again. Not really sure on the recharge time because I kept them on there about an hour, hour and 20 minutes, and then just started over again. Cool thing about that case is it actually gives you two more full battery cycles with each earbud, meaning you can get somewhere between eight and 12 hours, probably closer to the 10 hours without charging either the earbuds or the actual case itself. So it's a really, really nice feature. What about the price? Well, right now on Amazon or Best Buy, you can go out and buy these for $199, which is a lot better than those Broggy Dash Pros, which I haven't had a chance to review yet, but if they're anything like the original Broggy Dashes, and while that's $50 more than the Apple AirPods, they do come with more features than those Apple AirPods have right now. But you know me, and the number one thing that I'm always worried about with true wireless earbuds is the Bluetooth connectivity. So how was that compared to all the others? The Bluetooth connectivity on these bad boys weren't too bad. I was able to walk upwards of 15, 25 feet just across the room over there, and it still played and connected to my phone that's right here. So long story short, I didn't have the connectivity issues that I did with the original Broggy Dashes. This ranks right up there with the Apple AirPods. So I feel confident that the Bluetooth connectivity, even if my phone was in my bag or just across the room, I could walk around and be comfortable with these in and on my body. Overall, these headphones are really good for someone trying to to get into the truly wireless earbud game but not necessarily want to skimp on some of the other features that some of them have. These do compare pretty well to the Samsung Icon X except for the Icon X has trash battery life. These are significantly better than that plus they have all the features. So with the features like heart rate monitor, passive mode, completely waterproof, and a four hour battery life, if you are a person that likes to work out, get sweaty, go swimming, whatever it might be, and you want truly wireless buds, these are probably the ones for you. However, if you're like me and you're not as active as you probably should be, sorry doc, you may want to think about going to an Apple AirPod because those are just a little bit more your speed. So that's it. If I had to make a recommendation, if you are someone who is super outdoorsy and needs to have those type of headphones, these are definitely you. If you're somebody that's a little bit more like me, a little bit more sedentary than the doctor would like to see, the Apple AirPods are still my number one choice. So that's it. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. You guys are the best live show every single Friday at 7.30. Join us. We pretty much read every single comment. We now have our podcast that's on iTunes and Google Play under The Tech Speaks. It's the Technically Speaking podcast, which is just a replay of our live show on Fridays, just in case you want to listen in the car. As always, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment below, and I will see you all next time.